I would be like, that's a kid. Like, you can just see by the frame, right? Like, well, yeah, the fucking fact that their head is like fucking a quarter, more than a quarter of their body. Right, exactly. And then there's like, <laughs> there's like Bobblehead. fauna around too. Yeah. So it's not, it's not like you're just seeing this thing on like of a background of white at a distance. You have, there's markers around for you to like gauge perspective. So it's like, I think this would be like his account of this would be accurate because I don't, I don't think it's very difficult to spot like a child like you'd be like that it was the size of a child i don't think that's a hard thing to spot at you know at the distance that he describes being it'd be well, and he had his special it. glasses yeah. on too big coke bottles yeah the, uh, the green tinted glasses <laughs> Um, now with these with these two beans they also appear to be dressed in some type of white overall type of outfits um is what he described and that these these you know he called them children or like uh when they saw him oh, so they're fucking so they're wearing osh gosh bagosh fucking <laughs> oh shit little seal silver halloween outfits from uh... <laughs> And uh, oh, so he said that they actually that there there seemed to be some type of reaction uh, by these beings uh, when they they cited his car or his like him approaching towards uh, this vehicle, this uh, this craft or, or this object. And they said that they seemed to kind of jump in, in, in either being startled or, no. or afraid um, when they actually noticed him now. Zamora had stopped his cruiser near the edge of the hill that was overlooking the object. And Zamora actually, you know, he had the, he had the, uh, you know, even though he, he wasn't sure what he was seeing, he still had, uh, he still had the idea to be like, I, you know what, I got to radio this in. So he, ra he, he, gra he, he goes back down to his dial. He turns his radio back on <laughs> after turning it off. <laughs> Uh, got signal again. <laughs> um, and so wreck, wreck down in the valley. <laughs> uh, so he radioed back to his station uh, with the intention, uh, or, you know, telling them that I'm going to go check out a wreck down in the Arroyo because it, that's all he can really describe of what is kind of going on. Um, and so there are reports that when he radioed in that, there was there was definite static interference and that there's like there i think there's some dispute as to whether his his message actually made it through or he was able to be understood as to what he uh like what his intentions were so but after he radioed in he didn't really wait for confirmation he didn't wait for anything like that he just okay. proceeded on foot down towards the object until he was stopped short by the sound of another loud low roar uh, that's that started to be that began to kind of permeate the air. Um, well, and, so, and some of the like some of the description is like he could feel, like not only he, he like hear the low roar, but like feel like the bass, like like he felt it. And so Zamora says that he actually recalls hearing a, a metallic thunk sound. Um, and then this craft began to lift off the ground and it. You know, by his when he was looking at it, it, it seemed to be uh, that there was some type of propulsion coming out to the bottom in, in the form of a, a bluish flame that was projecting out of the bottom of the craft and seemed to be pushing it up. So, you know, combustion, basically your basic rocket kind of looking like flame. coming. So, out we, so yeah. he so he noticed the like the the hobbits, the aliens, <laughs> let's say. But then the craft started to lift off did he just didn't see them run back in or where i or think were they, he like, went to go in, back in or on the craft i think he went to go back to radio in and then yeah, they were like, gone like they weren't they, yeah, they darted back to the to the oval to take like off. he i think he he originally like he walked up to the edge of that hill like his cruiser was kind of parked oh, and he had to look down and he had to look down in it and they saw you know they might have saw him and that's where he got you know he, he got the uh well, they were startled, right? Like right. They kind of noticed them. They stopped what they were doing, so obviously they knew something was up. And, and that's what he yeah. describes, that he gets the uh, the idea that they're, they, there's, there's a startle, there's some kind of reaction is uh, elicited from them seeing him. Um, and so then he goes back to his car, so, or he goes back to his cruiser, and he radios in. He comes back. They're gone. He goes back. You know, he starts approaching the craft down the hill. He starts hearing this loud roar, rumbling sound. Uh, the craft begins to lift off of the ground. And so at this point, not really knowing what else to do, uh, he dives to the ground 
uh near his, i think it's like near his car and he runs back to his to his cruiser and kind of dives to the ground thinking that something's going to explode because what else are you know in 1960 what else do you think it's going to be except some type of rocket dynamite, type, yeah, dynamite rocket yeah, something that yeah, any well, and <laughs> obviously he's feeling the effects from whatever propulsion is like it's hitting like he's getting hit with wind and like heat probably so it, it that's probably where that fear comes from is that he's feeling this propulsion system taking off right so yeah he's like holy fuck like could you imagine standing next to a rocket and you're like that within 50 feet like i imagine as it started to go you'd be like it'd be face melting almost you'd be like holy fuck i'm in trouble so whatever the propulsion is of this craft it's much more you can you notice it rather than other ufos you know that yeah. seem to just float and hover silently and accelerate so maybe a bit more rudimentary well maybe so maybe but part of the thing that you know i was thinking that you know we kind of talked about it on the silurian uh hypothesis with ben um is that like is it is it a propulsion system or is what he saw the only way he could like describe it with something he knows would be to describe it be like this it was had to been because this i this is how i know things to work and this is kind of what i saw does that mean that it was a propulsion system or maybe it was some sort of like you know acoustic deadly death flame that they shoot out to melt right yeah and like he it's just it was just blue and he's like it had to have been fire i felt heat i felt i heard rumble and this is what i know so this is the best i can explain but it's really no science that we know and not the propulsion system that we think of possibly like that's maybe a, a possibility in this because to be honest tradition traditional propulsion like that does not seem like the best kind of avenue for interstellar no. travel it's not no. it would not happen it's very terrestrial it would take you it would take you if you go with light years like light years to get anywhere yeah like it would take you forever you they if you just direct line propulsion just heat fire up a rocket going as fast as you can and just drift unless they're androids and they can drift forever and never yeah. maybe never that's age. like their little maybe this is their pod though and maybe that's what they use to travel around earth oh like a landing, landing yeah, like a rover kind? yeah right and i i kind of thought that too because i was i was thinking that you know perhaps if they thought they were landing in the desert or perhaps they've been here before they're like oh we know that this is not in like a habitable spot and then they land and they're like hey hey you know fucking selfies hey look at us in the dead and then all of a sudden they're like fucking lonnie zamora comes over they're like what the fuck like wait, wait, they can drive now like get let's we gotta get the fuck out of here we just broke all the non-contact rules uh so uh zamora actually looked up from the ground he lifted his head and was able to watch the craft as he described it seemingly hovering in one place above the ground and then um from his recollection the the struts at the bottom of the craft were gone whether they had retract or retracted or disappeared or whatever the somehow uh they were gone so it was just a smooth uh aluminum aluminum uh sheened object uh just kind of sitting up there and then he said that the craft then moved away uh to the southeast uh for about 15 or 20 miles until it disappeared from sight and like he's pretty shook at this point in time because then he like he beelines it back to his car and hops on the radio and asks the dispatcher like look out your window can you see this and then the dispatcher's like, I don't know what you're talking about. He's like, what are you seeing? He's like, I don't know, like an air balloon or something like that? Like, this doesn't make any sense. And how fast did it travel? To, he didn't, it doesn't seem like it said, like it like Ooh, vanished over the horizon. Like it seemed it just, like he watched it. Yeah, it, it didn't, it didn't just go. like instantaneously move. I mean, he just kind of described watching it as it just kind of traveled fast enough to kind of just go 15 or 20 miles over the horizon. And then just, that was it until it was out of sight. Um, so yeah, it, it, it Zamora is, you know, uh, understandably shook by what he has seen. Um, and so one of the first people that he calls to come in and, you know, back him up is he calls New Mexico State Police Sergeant Sam Chavez, who is a he's a, both yep. a professional and a personal um, acquaintance of uh, Zamora. Like they had worked together. They knew each other like they were friends. Um, and so he called him just to, to get 
somebody over there that he knew and that he could you and know, he trusted talk to. Yeah, right? right like a trusted source that's not like it's to be honest like it'd be like it'd be like if i saw something, something shitty or crazy i it's not like i'm gonna call like if i if i called somebody i didn't know they would potentially hey guys thanks for watching i know it's annoying to watch these broken up in 10 minute segments but here's the next one over here or if you want to watch the whole thing uncut and after hours just click this link to our website and uh, give us a donation you get full access to it on patreon anyways thanks guys enjoy the next video